Hello, my name is Bradley Butler, and I'm the Executive Director and Curator at Main Street Arts in Clifton Springs, New York. Uh, I'm going to take you on a virtual walkthrough of our current exhibition, uh, From Earth. Uh, this exhibition of painting, collage, and photo-based mixed media works. Um, this exhibition provides four ways to see the common thread which weaves through it all, uh, the earth, nature, and how each artist connects to the natural world through their distinctive lens and vision. Uh, From Earth includes uh, work by Carol Lacuano, Lynn Feldman, Judy Goringer, and Patty Rosati. Uh, each of the artists have studios on the third floor of the Anderson Arts Building in Rochester, New York. Uh, so I'm going to give you a little tour here of the, the exhibition, uh, which is a great way for us to start out the year here at Main Street Arts. Uh, a lot of color, a lot of texture, uh, perfect for, uh, you know, the, the winter weather. Um, so, and I love that this exhibition is so full. Um, there is a lot of work to look at, and it does extend up to the second floor here at Main Street Arts into our library. Um, so if you are planning to visit, please be sure to visit the second floor as well. And uh, as we put this exhibition together, I was definitely struck with, um, you know, the common elements found in each of the artists' work, uh, even though they are all unique and distinct um, bodies of work, they go so well together in this exhibition. And it's exciting to go, our last exhibition was, was Small Works, so it's really exciting to go from a show called Small Works um, to an exhibition like this where, our, where there are you know, a lot of large works, <laughs> a lot of large artwork in this exhibition. Uh, always exciting to see here on our walls. Um, so I'm going to uh, show you a little bit of each of the artists' work and tell you a bit about them, uh, starting with Carol Aquilano. Uh, who has a, a variety of uh, watercolor paintings in the exhibition. Uh, so Carol says of her work, from the smallest emerging growth to the large expanse of hills and sky, the earth provides a banquet for the artist. Uh, what governs the quivering petals and gives shape to the, to the scent of nature, I am eager for this challenge and its gifts. The bounty of the garden offers endless subject matter. Plants uh, offer such interesting compositions and the peacefulness is just right for getting in the groove. Uh, in this place, I am witness to a succession of blossoming things, uh, an orchestra that performs to the sun and to the moon, to the wind and the bees. So all of um, Carol's watercolors in this exhibition um, are uh, scenes from a garden with various uh, stages of abstraction for each composition. And uh, many of them are full sheets of watercolor paper, um, which is a really exciting thing to see. You know, such a large um, painting done in watercolor. Uh, it's often a difficult thing because watercolor dries so quickly. But as you can see, just the difference between those two um, you know, both abstracted from nature, but uh, this one taking it even further with the color. And then we've also got um, this one more of a uh, landscape than just looking at um, a small spot in the garden, looking at more of a, a larger view there. Uh, Carol studied painting and glass at the School of the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston and spent a semester abroad in Cortona, Italy. She has attended many art workshops and residencies, among them uh, Pilchuck Glass Center, uh, Center for Book Arts, Women's Studio Workshop, and the Cortona Studies Abroad Program. Uh, she recently concluded many decades on the curatorial staff at the Memorial Art Gallery in Rochester and as an instructor at SUNY Empire State College. And 
And uh, so next we'll take a look at a few pieces by Judy Goringer. Uh, Judy's work in this exhibition mainly consists of um, paintings on, on panel. Uh, acrylic paintings on panel. Um, here's a nice diptych to start us off. Um, and uh, Judy uh, says of her work, the natural landscape has always been one of the highest forms of beauty and interest to me. Natural landscapes are universal, ageless, inspiring, and often humbling. Many times a specific landscape can remind us of a special time and place, and it can uh, be a piece of personal history or nostalgia made visible or visual. Um, how can the natural landscape then be translated into a painting or collage? How can uh, it be expressed so that the viewer feels the weather or smells the earth and wind or feels the expanse? Since I cannot improve on reality, I must then change it, reinterpret it, deconstruct it, uh, stylize it, or exaggerate it. My challenge when painting is the dance between uh, depicting the recognizable in nature and conveying the essence of it in abstraction. And so you can see that, you know, from her work that you've seen so far, uh, that balance of something that suggests uh, natural elements, um, things that you've seen in the natural world, and then things that are purely abstract, and how those two uh, kind of worlds relate to each other. Uh, and in addition to the paintings on panel, there are also paintings on found wood. Uh, so here we have some cedar shakes uh, used as the surface for painting. She also uses driftwood uh, in this exhibition. And uh, also there are a few collage pieces as well. If you can see here, we've got some collaged painted paper. Judy Goringer is a Rochester-based abstract painter, a graduate of Brockport College. Um, Judy also studied art and design at RIT, uh, weaving at the Rhode Island School of Design, and uh, received a degree in art education from Nazareth College. And she shares a studio space in the Anderson Arts Building with her husband, sculptor Peter Goringer. So here's a piece, another piece on found wood by Judy. Uh, next, we'll take a look at um, some paintings by Lynn Feldman. Uh, so Lynn has five of these large uh, painting and collage hybrid pieces here. Um, and so you can see both painted patterns and also patterns uh, that come from fabric that she uses in her work. And uh, so Lynn says, I spent a lot of my youth staring out of my Manhattan 16th floor apartment win or building window uh, at the city below. And I would say to myself, someday I will live in the country. The country for me represented any place with lots of green and animals and less density of people. I wanted to be in the woods, to follow trails, and turn over rocks and rotted wood, looking for creatures uh, and to wander among the trees. I have always been fascinated by trees, by their bark, uh, the shape of their branches and leaves, and the holes in them where animals live. Uh, this series of paintings uh, were all done after inspirations furnished by our natural parks and by simple hikes. Uh, with these paintings, I pay homage to uh, the magnificence of nature. And it's great, um, you know, to see all of these artists working in various degrees of abstraction. Um, you know, they each have their own way of approaching that, um, but each of them really have a, uh, a unique way of making their imagery and making their imagery uh, unique. So uh, very, very interesting to see. Uh, Lynn Feldman attended um, New York University 
and Empire State College, and received a master's in art education uh, from Columbia University. Uh, her artwork has been exhibited in galleries, museums, and public spaces around the country. And uh, the next and, and final artist we'll look at in this exhibition is Patty Rosati. Uh, so Patty, um, in, in this exhibition, uh, it's, it's photo-based work, uh, a lot of which is on fabric, but some on paper, um, and some have additional elements stitched in or, um, you know, collaged in. Uh, and so Patty says, existing senses and perceptions are often blinders that require us to get past what we know and open another world of sensory perceptions. My goal is to go beyond and into the metaphysical web of nature and perception, glimpsing what we often cannot see but feel, unseparated connections, rhythms, both of the past and future. My work in this exhibition illustrates the connections I am perceiving, the interwoven, porous, and disappearing boundaries between humans and nature. The work presented become gems within a, large, uh, within a larger totality. It is a conversation of observance asking, what form do these things take after nature? And so you can see there's various um, different processes that she uses to get her images, um, some of which are more of an alternative process, other is more traditional. Um, for a lot of the imagery that she um, uses that is uh, obviously photographic, uh, she actually uses a flatbed scanner um, to, to get these really detailed but also almost surreal um, images of, of nature. Uh, Patty holds an MS and um, education degree from uh, Indiana University and spent four decades as a professor uh, at Rochester Institute of Technology, most recently in the School of Photographic Arts and Sciences. Currently, she is creating and offering workshops online and in person to provide emerging and established artists uh, with acquiring digital tools to expand their art practice and to clarify their intent. And I think the thing that really most interests me about uh, Patty's work is the way that she uh, uses photography and, um, you know, things beyond photography um, to really make these pieces um, even more interesting. So here we've got one image that's mirrored and then stitched into uh, to make it, I, I find, very compelling. Uh, so you can preview and purchase work uh, and view photos of the exhibition at MainStreetArtsCS.org. I also like to invite you to tune in to the artist talk with these four artists live on Facebook on Tuesday, February 6th at 5 p.m. Uh, to learn more about them, uh, the ideas surrounding their work, and their process for making that work. And you can join us live on Facebook. You'll also be able to watch that um, on YouTube and Instagram after the fact. Uh, we hope that you'll have a chance to come in and see this exhibition for yourself. Uh, the show runs through Wednesday, February 21st, and we are open Tuesday and Wednesday from 11 to 3 p.m., and Thursday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. So we hope that you have a chance to see this show, and hope you've enjoyed this little walkthrough. Thanks. <laughs>